Uh, hello, I'm Martin. Uh, the reason for conducting this, oh, hang on. The reason for conducting this study was to determine uh, what are the influencing factors on cane farmers' decision-making process in, in response to the regulations. What I'm going to do is pop up all um, four squares here. It's just going to make it easier for us. Um, this study was born out of a scoping review undertaken by Drennan and Price. Uh, they examined 86 peer-reviewed articles looking at influences on cane farmers' uh, attitudes towards government regulations to requiring BEP adoption both domestically and globally. One factor identified was researchers predominantly report farmers make decisions that have some form of evaluation. Uh, so these are termed cognitive decisions. However, further evidence suggests farmers may make decisions to act driven by other behavioral concepts, including low and uh, non-cognitive drivers of behavior. So I'll go on to explain this in the next slide. Um, once again, I'm going to pop up both lots of information. Um, so confirming cognitive decisions are evaluative decisions. For example, with Agin's theory of planned behavior, which states that behaviors are born out of our behavioral intentions, um, which are informed by um, three variables, attitudes towards performing the behavior, our normative beliefs, uh, what others think of our behavior, and our control beliefs whether we think we can or cannot do the behavior. However, dual process scholars argue for the relevance of other behavioral concepts, which are low and non-cognitive drivers of behavior. Uh, these are our emotions, how we feel about doing the behavior, our habits, that is repeating past behaviors without much need for cognition. So we're doing them automatically. And the use of heuristics, these are um, cognitive shortcuts often coupled with biases. Therefore, we conducted a document analysis of the grey literature to, to determine if the report authors considered low and non-cognitive drivers of behaviour are relevant to cane farmers and BAP adoption uh, in addition to the cognitive decisions. So I'm just going to take you through now the process of conducting the document analysis. I'll do this quickly. Um, first, we set a protocol and also our um, process of doing the thematic analysis. We uh, established criteria um, for the reports, um, established a word string, applied the um, criteria and word string to our Google search, and also we used other sources of information for our document analysis. These are some of the entities um, which uh, the official reports, uh, which official reports met the criteria for the document analysis. Yes, yeah, it's a colorful slide, that one. Um, from all the reports examined, 42 uh, reports met the criteria. And these are the 13 themes that were established from uh, those reports. As you can see, reef management has the highest frequency at 489 occurrences. From the 13, from the 13 themes, uh, five themes were removed because they were not relevant to the study's aim, leaving eight prioritized themes. These are the eight prioritized themes, BMP influences uh, having the highest frequency at 343 occurrences now. The remaining eight themes are divided into two groups of four themes. The first group of four themes uh, share common sub-themes. For example, if you look at the fourth themes circled here and the sub themes on the right, we get graphs that look like the following. Uh, this allowed us um, to see what this, what themes shared common sub themes and allowed us to um, see the importance of the sub themes within a theme and compare them across themes. For example, with BMP barriers and enablers, economic uh, factors are the most important sub theme while BMP influences, it's the second most important sub-theme. The second group of four themes didn't share the uh, common sub-themes. However, they still hold valuable um, information. These themes show a percentage of frequency occurrence of specific sub-themes, uh, which aid in answering the study's aim. This will be seen in uh, future slides. So now the main results. The report authors identified economic factors play a prominent. Ooh, the, I'll just put all four up. 
um, economic factors play a prominent role across BMP uh, barriers, enablers, and influences in shaping farmers' decisions to adopt or non adopt a BMP scheme. Also that, also that farmers assess and react to the need for BMP adoption at some level of cognition, consistent with the theory of planned behaviour. Further, the reports hold uh, limited explicit evidence highlighting the influence of emotions, habits and heuristics on a BMP adoption within the 42 reports. With plenty of evidence of cognitive decisions in response to the regulations in the reports, but very limited or, uh, for low and non-cognitive decisions. Um, so then uh, we looked for proxy evidence of these other behavioural concept acting on farmers' decisions in uh, elsewhere. Starting with normative influences, we see farmers' peers are the dominant normative influence, further that peers may promote cognitive uh, discussions or entrenched biases on BNP adoption. This is dependent on the dominant normative source. So we're starting to see evidence that farmers may be using low and uh, non-cognitive decision processes, including habits and heuristics, depending on a farmer's peers. Uh, with farmer typology, uh, the reports highlight that farmers are diverse with different personalities, goals, and uh, motiv motiv yeah, motivations. The Abeers report states, that more profitable farmers will likely adopt smart cane BMP, six easy steps, and will be making extensive use of technology. For example, with chemical application and field mapping resulting in higher cane yields. These results suggest that farmers have adopted a cognitive decision process. They evaluated the benefits of adoption, plus they have control to enact that behavior. The report also states that less profitable farmers feel constrained by their inability to uh, afford new production technologies. This is more emotional, so a non-cognitive response, and highlights uncertainty with control beliefs over their ability to adopt a BMP scheme. Okay, we're going to get something in a minute. Um, then when we look at the themes and common sub-themes, we see the picture more clearly. By the way, I have combined the sub-themes control and risk and uncertainty together because collectively they respect, uh, they um, reflect um, the same, uh, the, sorry, they uh, reflect uh, control beliefs collectively. Yep. With barriers, a report identifies a lack of financial resources retards adoption. But this is paired with a lack of other resources as well, general resources and including um, uh, knowledge and skills. Uh, we also see higher uh, we also see um, higher uncertainty expressed in their control beliefs. So you'll see that's oh, okay. Hi, yep. Um, for example, expressions of uncertainty include BMP uh, costs and weather markets, crop yields, and other industry and, and the industry's future generally. For enablers and influences, economic factors are viewed from the perspective of productivity gains, productivity gains, and uh, government incentives. Reports indicate these farmers expressed high certainty in their control beliefs. Uh, economic factors are not prominent. Um, for farmer attitudes, but farmers are expressing higher uncertainty in their control beliefs, the same as barriers. Um, so it appears that farmers' control beliefs represent the clearest proxy evidence for low and non-cognitive decision processes. Based on the previous information, it now appears that farmers with higher control belief certainty resulting from adequate resource and capacity to mitigate risk with adoption are likely to make cognitive decisions to optimize farm performance. This is consistent with the theory of planned behavior. Farmers uh, with more control belief uncertainty resulting from limited resource availability to facilitate adoption and capacity to mitigate the risks with adoption are likely to apply a greater range of decision strategies, cognitive low and non-cognitive decisions. This is consistent with a dual process model leading to behavior. Um, okay, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Thank you.